Hello everyone and welcome back to the RMT Women's Podcast. This is episode 158 and we do have our lovely friend Emma Sanders on the podcast this week. I feel like it's been a while since you've done one of these. Why are you waving at me? Yeah, hi. Hey! Like we haven't just spoke to her for 15 minutes before then. I don't know. I don't know. Felt like yeah, it felt, time. I felt an urge and it felt appropriate at the time Probably in reflection. Happy. I could have done without it. Mm. It's okay though. Well, I appreciated it. I appreciated it. Thanks, Ames. Sorry. Well, yeah, no, I think I feel like it's been ages since we've us three have done a podcast together. Um, yeah, I think so. Emma's always too busy for us now. That's what it is. Lauren, we're too busy for ourselves. What? You're too busy for yourselves. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Just a Which casual. Very busy. Yeah, we're all busy. I think we've established that. We're all very <laughs> busy people. I don't heard I'm telling you. It's not what I signed up for. No. So I appreciate it. But there we are. Um, a few bits and bobs to discuss this week. Let's just dive straight into it. Obviously, Liverpool are absolutely flying at the minute. Um, won 4-0 over Crystal Palace on Sunday. Um, it was just a really dominant display. I think from Liverpool, I don't think we were quite expecting a 4-0 scoreline um, afterwards, but hey, I'm here for it. Um, but yeah, a dominant display against a really good Crystal Palace team. It's just it's just nice that we've just been able to just kind of keep this momentum going really, isn't it, Emma? Yeah, it's been really good. And I think it was really important as well after... Um, obviously the Watford result and then you know which was a bit of a struggle but obviously it was great to get that victory and then to go to Tottenham um, put in a really good performance and then then nick it quite late on you like you just sort of hoped that that obviously the girls were going to bounce back from that and sort of return to kind of that that free-flowing football that they were showing um, a couple of weeks before and they absolutely did that so yeah I thought it was it was a really really good result and you know, it probably should have been more than 4-0, uh, 3-0 at half-time. And I think we hit the post, well, the crossbar twice, I think, before half-time. So could quite easily have been 5 or 6. And then obviously, you know, we, we were able to kind of rotate again. Um, loads of players were able to get minutes, just like they did against Spurs. So, yeah, like, I, it's really it's really hard to say something other than the fact that it's just really, really good at the moment. Like, everything's going well. Like even even the Watford result was just like well that just showed that you know <laughs> even when it's not going to plan there's there's like a plan B and a plan C so yeah um, the Palace result was was just really fun to be honest <laughs> yeah it's it's interesting that you say there like a like a plan B or a plan C because I feel like we haven't had that in previous seasons where we've had a plan B to be like this mm. game's not going our way there's twenty minutes left like throw this person on or change to this formation or do this. Like that's that shows the progression of sort of the the team and the squad really this season, doesn't it, Amy? It does. And like I would literally was thinking the exact same thing when Emma was speaking then. I was like, oh, plan A, B, C, D, E, and F when we still had Babajide was let's hit it up to her. That was it. Do you know what I mean? That was the only other thing we, we kind of did. Um, or what it felt like. I mean, I'm sure technically we probably did a lot more, but in my brain, that's all I can really remember. Um, but yeah, I just feel like, the, like Liverpool at the minute is a perfect example of how well you can win games when you, you're playing football confidently. And like, I think it is a massively confidently high Liverpool team at the minute. Like, not one of those players... It, is has not been performing to 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 some to some level that we would expect. Even those that are come, kind of come in and out of the team every time they're asked, they come in and and they do the job for us. Um, like off the top of my head, I think Michaela Moore obviously came on and played played um against Spurs and did a solid performance. Jade Bailey as well, Carla Humphrey when she's called upon, like all players that to be honest, anywhere else in the championship they'd all be starting, but because of the strength and the calibre of the players that we have at Liverpool, it's 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 so competitive at the minute. And I think that's probably why everyone's so confident they're getting games and getting chosen to play these games based on how well they're performing, which must come hand in hand with confidence as it is. 
But honestly, not since the league title, I've never seen a Liverpool team be this good and have this many great players involved and scoring from loads of different angles. So I don't think you can complain about anything at the minute. You really can't. Um, And I just hope we don't drop off and we don't um, pull it off this season because I think it's the perfect ending to this season if if we get promotion. Yeah. And like speaking of goals and like confidence, Katie Stengel's made a really confident start to her to her career in Liverpool. What a woman! Well, I was I was gonna ask you because like you tweeted about it today, and you're like her Twitter account is just absolutely incredible. It's insane! I am obsessed. She didn't know what Primark was. It's amazing. Yeah, and like, did you see the one about like eating pizza at like a knife and fork and that? Like, yeah. Like, like I do that, and I thought that was a genu- genuine worldwide thing. I do that because sometimes the pizza's a bit sloppy. What? You eat I, pizza with a knife and fork? Yes. I don't do it all the time, but I have done it. Yeah. What? Like, if I'm at a social event, I won't get a knife and fork out. Like, but at a restaurant, if I'm, like, sat down, I will. At a restaurant? maybe at a push but only if uh, someone else did and I was like well I'm gonna look like a scruff now if I don't I just find it easier I enjoy it more I'm not like I'm like that's that's part of the enjoyment is it it's like oh it goes goes down too quickly and I just want to like savor it I don't have a pizza very often so when I have it I want to be Either way, her tweets are incredible. I am here for it. She's, she tweeted about M&S earlier, and I was like, same. Yeah, like, yeah, things like, like M&S, like, we don't shop at M&S all the time. They're for, you know, the good occasions when you're feeling a bit fancy. Don't get me wrong, I'll get some Percy Pigs now and again. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. they fancy, like, M&S is, you know, you go to for a meal. Like, they don't have them, like, they don't have Marks and Spencers. Like, <laughs> how have they lived? I wonder what their equivalent to Marks and Spencers is then. Do you reckon it's like a Whole Foods or something? Yeah. Like Whole Foods would be quite expensive. I mean, it is America. They've probably got about five or six fancy M&S type rest- like supermarkets, let's be honest. Probably, probably called they do like everything DNS big. Or DNS. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> a rebrand. Yeah, um, A&S. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going back to that before, um, She's made a really, oh, yeah. really good start. Um, she seemed on fire on Sunday. Her goal was very cheeky as well, I thought. Um, I enjoyed it when I seen the, the highlights of it. But how do you think her coming into the Liverpool team has helped Leanne Kernan? Or Because she's obviously been on, on fire this season for us. But it must get to a point, like, in a player's head that if you're continuously playing week in, week out, you're like, well, this position's just mine, really. Like, this is what I have to do for the team. Like, this is where I'm going to stay. But then for another striker to come in halfway through the season, like, ha- like that much must, must switch something in you where you're just going to be like, well, I've got I've to really go for it now. Like, it must help, it must help players psychologically mustn't it Emma like when a new signer comes in to be like okay well I know I've got to keep pushing myself I'm doing exactly what I've been doing yeah that's exactly it isn't it it's, it's all about raising the standards and if there's more competition not only for places but there's more competition in training it's going to improve the the defenders if they you know they've not just got one striker that they have to sort of worry about in training they've now got you know two um, even on match days, I, for, you know, for the opposition, they can't they can't sit back and think, oh well, we've managed to contain, you know, the anchor and for eighty minutes she's starting to get tired now because Liverpool now have that option to bring on a Katie Stengel who is, you know, equally as as threatening, or they, you know, there's now the opportunity to play both of them at top together, which is obviously just another plan D. Um, I had to think about the alphabet really quickly in my head, then that was really <laughs> difficult. Um, but yeah, so naturally it's it's gonna you know it's gonna not only just improve Leanne in terms of that competition and pushing her to raise her standards more. It's gonna improve Katie. It's gonna improve like like I say that like everyone else in training. And it's just gonna just having that squad depth and just having those those options just I just think really helps. So yeah, she's made a big impact and she's she's got a big personality as well as we we know from her Twitter account. But um, yeah, I mean within maybe her first one or two days of training. Um, yeah, kind of what I was hearing from out the club anyway was that she's, you know, she's got a big personality. So 
um, that's always a positive thing when you've got characters like that in the squad as well. Um, you know, it brings other people out of their shell and, you know, it brings the team closer together too. So, yeah, just really, really good all around. And um, what a start. Hopefully she just, you know, she can just carry it on and keep playing the way that she's playing because it's really good to watch her. And, yeah, cheeky. That's I thought that was the best description I've heard of her goal of the weekend so far. So, yeah, boss. <laughs> well, seven points clear at the top now. Um, eight games in the league left. I don't want to count my chickens too soon, but it's looking pretty good for us at the minute. We're in, we're, in, we're in a good moment, so, you know, I think it's time to start getting a little bit excited. Can we start I mean, chanting the political top league? Oh, yeah. yeah. Why, yeah. Did, why did you ask that, like, so, like, please, can we start singing this? Please, sir, can I have some more? Um, no. What a, what a good time to be alive. That's just what I'm trying, that's what I'm going to say, to be honest. And you know what, like, I just love going to the game. I mean, we just love it. Because we used to go, we used to be so excited, like, yeah, we're going to print it today. And then we used to lose. And we were still, like, <laughs> buzzing to go. But you used to be like, oh. Yeah, yeah. It's now not the same. You, like, you, you, you go now and you're like, we should be beating this team. We're going to beat this team. But that's, you know that's, like, that's like the thing. I go now and I'm like, well, we're going to win today. Like, no matter who you're playing, I'm like, oh, we're going to win. Like, even when, I remember, like, early on the season we were playing Sheffield and it's like, we're gonna win. Like you just, you just, you just know. You've just got a feeling that you're gonna yeah. do it, which is the like, confidence. Yeah, which is nice. I like. I don't. Yeah, I don't know whether like either of you guys read um, my piece that I did with um, with Matt Beard and um, and Leanne Kane. But basically, that pretty much that's what Beardy said was that in like the first like few weeks, because um, I think it wasn't until the third game that we scored at home. Well. Uh, well, we lost to London City Lionesses 1-0 and then we drew 0-0. Um, was it Blackburn? I think it was in the second game. Um, oh, no, Bristol City. Um, and then, yeah, and then it wasn't until the third game where, like, we finally got that first goal. And, like, Beardy said that he could sort of feel that the fans were a bit nervous and they weren't quite convinced by it in the first, like, two, two three weeks. And then when, when like, we finally got that goal and we got that win, it was almost like a, OK, here we go. And there was a bit of relief. And then he said sort of from that point on, because um, players were kind of more relaxed and they showed confidence. He said that he could, like, he could feel it in, in, in the crowd, that when the players walked out, like, the crowd genuinely were, like, rocking up to match day, thinking, like, we can win this. Like, we're playing really good football. With, you know, we're well on course for kind of what we want to achieve. And I absolutely agree, like, nowadays. And I think it's, like, because I know you guys obviously try and go every week. I tend to, like, go every three or four weeks, just whenever I can get it, obviously, off work. So, like, two or three games could pass before, like, I next come. And I, I know it's a difference, like, every single time because it's been, like, you know, over a period of time. And I come and I'm just, like, you can just sense, like, the excitement now. And, like, I genuinely can't remember the last time that I didn't go to watch a game and think like like we can't win this like even when we went on to London last week Lauren for the Spurs game but I genuinely was like I feel like we can win this yeah and I think you can like notice like it as well with like the crowds oh sorry go on no no all I was gonna I was basically gonna say the same thing I was just gonna say like um you can notice that and even the amount of fans that are coming like each week like the, this is consistently a great number of fans each week going out and we've said it right from the very beginning you win games you get more people to come and watch because it's more interesting they've got someone to get behind and they can celebrate and follow the progress so you can see you can, you can see that it's obviously working because I was shocked at the men when the men's game was on at the same time um not uh yeah was it like the Watford game sorry hmm. the men's game was on at the same time and you couldn't, you didn't, you wouldn't have known. Like, I literally walked in expecting to see like Bill, Joe, and my dad, but like the whole, the whole stand was like booming. It was like really, there were so many people there. And I spoke to one of the um, the stewards um, at Prenton, and I was like, oh, um, I'm, I'm hoping like the crowd's good today. You know, obviously the men's game on, and he he made such a good point, and he was like, what are you laughing at? Oh, I, don't know said, I don't know why I said Bill and Joe. <laughs> I think that's why she's laughing. She's just like, why, why have you said Bill and Joe? Just carry on. 
I'm so sorry. Um, I was being to one of the stewards and I was basically like, oh, do you reckon like the crowd's going to be good, whatever? And he was like, yeah, I think so, because sometimes the audience that you have for the women's game is different for the men's games. So, and like some can't get to Anfield, whatever. I'm just going to carry on. I was pleasantly surprised. And as I said, like with confidence comes more fans and it's great. And Bill and Joe are lovely. <laughs> Bill and Joe are lovely. <laughs> Oh, no. I don't think she can, she can present oh, like, the rest I'm of the podcast. Like, I've done it again. I don't even know. Do you know why it's so <laughs> funny? It's because you were so confident when you said it. You were like, I was about to say, like, Bill, Joe, and me too. Where did that even come from? Oh, I don't know. God. I don't even know a Bill or a Joe. Oh, wow. That I don't think funny. I know a Bill. <clears throat> no, but I enjoyed that. Anyways, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, yeah. You're welcome. We'll move on. I'm more of a, I'll call it a sour note, but just a bit of an injury update, really. Just um, who's out at the minute. So, Kay Holland was out um, for a couple of games. She had COVID, so she should be back for Sunday. Oh, my um, Hopefully. Um, Jazz Matthews is out for about six to eight weeks, hamstring injury, which is not ideal. That's basically, I feel like that's basically like, end of the season really isn't it um, and then Mel Lord missed out on Sunday with a heel issue I'm not sure what the the problem is there whether she'll be I think I saw or... some. I think I saw somewhere she's only going to be out for a week or two I don't yeah. know don't quite that yeah. but something like she'll, that yeah I'm, I'm assuming she'll probably miss the weekend um, just as more as like precautionary rather than anything else um, Rihanna Dean is obviously still out with her, um, I'm sure she's like a heel, like foot issue as well, isn't she? Um, yeah. I don't think there's like I don't know if there's a, a, a time scale. I think Matt said like a couple of more weeks. It's a couple more weeks that so she'll be back in training. So then she'll obviously have it'll take a while for it. I think to return to full fitness. Yeah. So like I think, yeah, I think it'll probably be more towards the end of the season again, won't it? But. I feel really sorry for her because she absolutely was incredible against Watford. And then has had such unluck, like bad luck with this injury, whatever it is. And it's taken her out for the majority of the season. And um, thank God Leanne Kernan's been on fire because we would have been in a bit of a sticky situation because we wouldn't really have had that many options up top to look at. Um, I think you've not noticed Rihanna Dean not being in the team because Leanne Kernan's done really well. But imagine mm. if... If it, if, if it was the other way around, not the other way around, but imagine if Kenan hadn't been fine, we would have been in a situation. And that's probably led to a bit of the reason why Katie's come in. Probably not the whole reason. I think Katie's more looking towards like the WSL and stuff. But you've almost not missed the reality. Of course, you wanted to be in the squad. Of course, she wants to be in the team because she's an, she's a great player and can bring so much and is a WSL standard player. But you, you've almost like forgotten because... Leanne Cannon's made grass so much greener on that side. It's bizarre, but hopefully she comes back soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, and obviously Riley Foster is out with her injury as well. She's obviously out the rest of the season. I don't know if... Yes, um, I have. Um, I know you will, Amy, but I'm not sure if Emma's a TikTok kind of gal. Um, I, when, when I'm not working, I just don't go on social media. Yeah. So. You don't strike me Fair. as a TikTok... Um, no user i only go on tiktok when you send me when you send me the harry potter tiktok videos and i'm like oh, i've got to watch this yeah. but they're, they're well, actually really funny so i deleted tiktok for like a long time because i was spending a lot of my day you were obsessed yeah really obsessed. um i've set a, i have to set a limit on my phone now and everything like for the day because I, I sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll um but when I deleted it for a period of time, people had sent me TikToks. So you always ask me to do like the little jigsaw. I don't know if it asked uh, me to do that, Emily. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Oh, so I just thought I'm just going to have to re download it just so I don't have to fill this jigsaw in every time. And then I'm just back on the old, my old ways of several hours. Yeah. So, but it's fine. But what I was going to say was um, for those of you who do use TikTok, Riley Foster has a TikTok now. Um, and she ex- does a really good explanation of like her injury and what happened to her and it's like really like I d- I'm glad that she did it because 
even like we didn't know like the extent of of how how bad it was um so yeah like if you haven't haven't seen it go and watch it the username i can't remember i feel like it's halo life 06 i feel like i have no idea i Um, have no idea i'm gonna go with halo have a look and if we remember which we, we never do but we'll put it in the description anyway um but while we're on the subject of oh we're running out of time 10 minutes we're okay. um but yeah we haven't had that notice for a while um transfer window oh no, calm down. um transfer window shut on thursday liverpool have obviously had keith stengel come in in this window unlikely that we're going to have anyone else come in before the transfer window shuts emma is a firm no and she's in the know. So um, no. I, had, I asked Matt Beard post match the other week, and he was like, "No, I'm happy with my squad." <laughs> so I was like, okay. no. Well, we're, we're actually at, I think, pretty much the maximum squad cap. As in, I don't yeah. think it's feasibly possible really to add many players, if any. Because um, yeah, we've got a couple of academy players that are actually listed in our squad list. So um, yeah, we're like we've we've got, I think, one of the biggest squads in the champ. Well, certainly one one of the biggest squads in the championship. Might even be the the biggest. So, um, yeah, absolutely not expecting anyone else to come in. We did also add in Charlotte Clark as well, the goalkeeper. We did also. But so long ago that it feels like that wasn't in this window. Like in the summer. It was right at the very start, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, It was right at the very start when it opened. Well, it was actually before it opened because she was out of contract, so we could sign her in December. Oh, that's absolutely fabulous news. (laughs) Well, what my question I was going to ask is if you could. That sounded really fantastic and it actually <laughs> wasn't meant to be. <laughs> if you could I'm sign not... a player before the window shuts, what what area would you strengthen and, and why would you strengthen that? Over here. No, I'm not asking for player specific. I'm asking. There's a shame because Tobin Heath's more than welcome in the Liverpool squad anytime she wants. Um, but in terms of like area of the squad, like where where would you go to first? Left back for me. I think I think Taylor has obviously done a brilliant job, and Roby can play at left back. But if basically if Taylor gets injured, then I feel like, and obviously we've got Meg Campbell who can play at left back, but I don't think we've got an out and out left back as a backup. We've got lots of centre-backs who can play left-back. Um, and especially in this kind of new back three slash back five with the wing backs, um, I wouldn't mind bringing in like a, basically like an equivalent to kind of Charlotte Wardlaw on the left-hand side, like a nice young sort of wing-back type left-back as opposed to an out-and-out defender. Um, but I mean, personally, I think our squad is brilliant in all areas in terms of backup and everything. So I'm only saying that because it's like, we kind of have you to have pick to. an option. But yeah, you I'm, have to I'm not worried about it. <laughs> you have to give me an answer. Yeah, left back. There is a gun to your head. You can't see it, but it's there. <laughs> yeah. What, um, what about you, Amy? Where would you go? Uh, I would only say goalkeeper because... Um, Obviously, we had the situ for no other reason apart from obviously we didn't have a goal a, a goalkeeper person on the bench for um, Spurs game. Now I don't know, I don't know why, um, but that would be my only reason. I don't know anywhere else because we're brilliant and we're winning. So I don't I don't think we need anywhere else. I'd agree. I think my my go to probably be goalkeeper as well, and that's only because every time now that Rachel Laws plays, I immediately think oh my god she's got to go 90 minutes and not pull her groin like yeah, yeah. it's like PTSD it stresses me out I think I, I think I turned to Emma at the at Spurs and was like I'm really stressed about Rachel Laws pulling her groin like and there was one point where she was like stretching it and I was like no don't do it <laughs> yeah. any goal kick any goal kick I'm like yeah. Neve. Eve needs to just drop back and just just take one for the team. You're just gonna have to start playing it out from the back every single time now. Just don't go long with it. Ah, well, yeah. Rachel, yeah, well. you're watching, please just look after yourself for the next. She's a trooper. Games. She is a trooper. Please. Trooper, yeah. trooper. Yeah. But yeah, I think um, 
Well, I enjoyed this, guys. I thoroughly enjoyed oh, the conversation. Yeah. We've laughed. We've laughed. We've cried. Sang. Right. Is anyone else looking forward to the magic of the FA Cup this weekend? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> been clipped. And that's going on, on Twitter on Sunday morning. It's a gift. <laughs> 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 no, I am. I'm really looking forward to it. Shall we? Shall be good. Um, I have to say yes, because you know, we all know. You can take up. It's like shake hands. We love it. We're gonna awesome. win. <laughs> we'll win. We're gonna win. We're gonna go to Wembley. The men are gonna win at Wembley, and the women are gonna win at Wembley, and it's gonna be a Wembley party. I'm up for a Wembley party. I'm going to Wembley. I'm up, if we I'm up for Wembley. Um, I'm up for a clipper party on Sunday as well. Oh, Emma, are you going to the game on Sunday? Uh, no, I'm actually I'm on annual leave, so I'm spending a little bit of quality time with my sister and my brother-in-law. Boo. So. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Two different reactions there. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Anyways, we should probably end because this is going to die soon. We've got four minutes and 17 seconds left, so... I think you can manage an outro. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for joining us, Emma. It's been a pleasure. Um, Thank you. We hope you enjoyed. Like we said, we'll be at the game on Sunday. So you, if you have got no plans, head down to Brenton Park to watch the pool. Come the Clipper. In the magic of the FA Cup. And then post smash pint at the Clipper. See you there. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you all on Sunday for some post-match reaction. Bye. Bye. Bye.